there's a right and a wrong way to edit light and airy style. So if you feel like your images are falling flat, then you need to listen to these five mistakes to avoid in order to get that light and airy look. If you're not familiar with the term light and airy as far as a photography style goes, it just means a soft, bright, ethereal type of style, often inspired by film photography using a film stock like Fuji 400H. It's definitely a term that gets thrown around a lot and sometimes it gets a bad rap. People say that it has a flat or dull look, but I just think that sometimes they're not choosing the right ways to edit in order to achieve this look because it can be done beautifully. Honestly, I think it's kind of the bold, colorful, vibrant, or like really moody, rich photographers who tend to critique this style the most. But you can't just bump up your exposure and reduce all the contrast. That is not the best way to achieve this look. One of my private editing clients, Tanya, is a master at this style. She shoots film and then matches her digital photos. So that's where we have to work on the editing side is taking those digital images in Lightroom and making them look like the film. If you love this style, then here's five mistakes to avoid in order to achieve a better light and airy look. Mistake number one is not using the tone curve. The tone curve is really important to achieve a dynamic range and dimension to your images. Just because you're using the tone curve doesn't mean that it's going to be super contrasty or really rich and colorful. You just have to use it in a different way. The biggest problem with photos looking flat is that the dimension has been stripped from it. It no longer looks natural and has lost the balance of the whites and the blacks that give it that dynamic range. The next mistake I see a lot is washing out skin tones so they look unrealistic. Just because you have this bright and light style doesn't mean that everybody needs to look flat and pale and bright because you want the skin to look light. You still need to keep the natural look of the skin even though you have this other style. And it's not gonna make your style not light and airy just because somebody has darker skin. You have to make sure that you're still having natural skin color. Mistake number three is kind of similar to number two. The mistake is that you're bringing up exposure way too much, just in general, not even having to do with skin tone. Watch your histogram. Make sure that your histogram is not too far to the right. You can still have a light, bright style that's beautiful, but when you bring the exposure up too much, you lose all the details of the surroundings, the subject, the clothes, the landscape, everything, not just skin tones. So watch those exposures and don't bring them too high. The next mistake is blowing out highlights or not recovering highlights. You can do this during shooting or in post. So when you're shooting, if you're shooting for the subject and you want to capture the right exposure on the subject, if it's brighter outside, your background's going to be totally blown out, right? If you completely blow those highlights when you're shooting, then you can't recover those in post. So that's one reason why I always like to encourage people to underexpose or at least a little bit. Generally, keeping data in the raw file is better because we can change it and we can pull it back if we need to. The other part of that is if you do shoot a little bit underexposed, then in post, you just brighten everything up and you don't even worry about bringing those highlights back. The thing that you're missing is that there is data in those highlights, so you can bring them back just a little bit. They don't have to be totally, completely blown out. If you look at the film stock, Fuji 400H, you'll notice that it does retain highlights. It does still have that look, but it's so soft and glowy. And we can achieve that on the digital photos by recovering some highlights. The biggest tip to help train your brain to see those highlights is to switch your background in your develop module in Lightroom to white. You'll see how blown out it is. If it's completely white, you'll see it. I think the default is gray in Lightroom. When you have that background color, it's kind of hard to see it. You'll also see the colors of those highlights too. Sometimes they're super pink, sometimes they're yellow, and you don't notice it because it's sitting on a gray background. So make sure to handle those highlights correctly. By the way, can you do me a favor and hit that like button so I can make more videos like this? Or better yet, leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Do you have trouble with this style? Do you often make these kinds of mistakes? And the last big mistake I see is making the wrong choices when it comes to location, lighting, 
camera settings, and even clothing. And I don't mean wrong necessarily, but if you want this specific style, oftentimes there's a better way to do it. First, you wanna choose a lower contrast location or at least a lighter background. You don't wanna place your subjects in front of a black wall. That's not really gonna give you that look that you're probably hoping for. You can also use the sky as a lighter background or a distant field, trees, something like that. Pine trees, not so much. Regular trees with light diffused through them in the distance, still a good choice. You'll wanna watch for dark spots that you might not necessarily notice. A bush even, that's like a different color than everything around it. Even if you're backed up a lot and it's just a little more blurry, it's gonna look like this dark blob in the background and then you're gonna be really annoyed at yourself that you didn't try to avoid it earlier. And then you'll have to edit it out. So just generally, you want like a neutral, low contrast area. If your clients are open to it, you can also give them clothing suggestions. Something that's light, white, soft pinks, neutrals. I mean, it varies a lot, but if you're going for this style, that might be something that you could suggest to them. And then shooting backlit, when it's actually completely backlit, it's gonna be really great for the subject because it's going to be evenly lit, which is perfect for editing. Even though we can edit to try to correct for things, it's just the best choice if you can get it better out of camera and then your editing becomes so much more fun. Then you get to edit for style and enhancing instead of always trying to fix the problems. Shooting at a fairly wide open aperture is another camera setting choice that would be good. Try to stick to under 2.8 if you can. Consider an 85 millimeter or somewhere between 50 and 85. It actually gives you a little bit softer of a look without feeling like it's too zoomed in. And that lens combined with the backlight, it's really beautiful. I understand that it can be completely overwhelming and time consuming to try to figure this all out. You can usually get faster results with presets. They kind of give you that jump start. I do think it's important to have some foundational knowledge of the best ways that you edit to get this style. Do some research and find some presets that you wanna try out. I do test edits in mine. I'm sure other companies do as well. You can test different presets if you want, or if you wanna create your own presets, that's another option. If you're looking to just get started with improving editing, watch this next video, it should help you out. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.